Bye, everyone. I'm so pleased to be availing this opportunity to, at leisure, with the required depth and width and pauses, lead you through the beautiful path of Bhakti Yoga. And this path is indeed a beautiful path, a foundational path, as well as a culmination path. And in the last satsang, we looked at nine ways in which we can stay close to the contemplation of Ishwara, which is none other but the Supreme Consciousness imagined, just an imaginary Supreme Being, Supreme Presence that is omniscient, omnipotent, and all-pervading. It is the ultimate power, the ultimate omniscience. It is the mind of the divine that we connect with when we contemplate on Ishvara. While we can bring cultural attributes to this contemplation, do not forget that we are not simply chanting or serenading an imaginary fabrication of our mind. We're actually using our mind to imagine its presence, but it is the presence which precedes our existence. It is Sat, the ultimate existence. It is intelligence the ultimate awareness, and it is ananda, the ultimate joy, the ultimate happiness. So while we may use imaginary constructs to imagine Ishvara, or we can borrow religious cultural concepts to adorn Ishvara, Ishvara ultimately is Satchit ananda, absolute existence, absolute omniscience and absolute joy. It is remove everything and that's what you have. So we should never forget that any attributes are the good use of our mind, but we should not question this ultimate existence. So now I'm going to lead you through some um, contemplations on um, any obstacles that we meet on the path. And for that, I'm going to open some of my writing. Just to lead you through some pathways. Yeah. So one of the um, one of the you know important attributes that we are discussing currently in the Vedic way is smarna or constant remembrance of Ishwara. But what is the challenge that we meet there? The challenge is that our mind is often like a monkey. And it tends to flit from subject to subject. It tends to drift away, especially if we are not in satsang or are not in company with a satsangi. A fellow companion is known as a satsangi on that same path. So if you are not with a sadhana partner having a discussion, if you are not with members of the same contemplation community and people are talking about different worldly topics, 
relationships, news, war, gossip, clothes, shoes. The mind just goes there, does it not? So this is definitely um, an issue. However, what I want to introduce to you is that what if you went along the worldly path of pontification, but then reconnected it to Ishwara? So for example, if someone complimented you on your shoes, you may be happening to wear a nice, sturdy and elegant pair of shoes, you can say thank you, and then what you can do is you can find what is the Ishwara connection here, and you can say, well, Ishwara, which is a keeper of a jiva or an embodied soul's karma, has ensured that Ishwara's material energy transforms into good karma, spiritual energy transforms into my good karma and material energy transforms into this sturdy, comfortable, elegant pair of shoes. Boom, you're back to Ishwara. If there is someone who is causing you harm, typically the mind tends to harbor negative emotions them versus me, him or she or they versus me. How could they, how must they, must they do this? And when we get there, when we get into this scenario, we the mind then leads us away from the divine realm. However, if we again say, wow, wow, this person is harming me, suing me, blocking me. What else? Backbiting about me. Wow. However, back to Ishwara. If Ishwara dwells in all beings, then perhaps you will then cultivate a uh, spiritual curiosity as to what are you being taught here, what strengths you are asked to bring up within you, and what virtues can you cultivate where you can defend yourself, remove a person, but with inner sense of tolerance, where you don't become ruined with the negativity. So you're back into a spiritual zone. Similarly, there might be some people who are really attractive, friendly, flirtatious, or awesome, and or comforting, and you just love being with them and you laugh and you chitter chatter and you learn so much from them. Once again, come back to Ishwara. Beyond the attraction, infatuation, over-evaluation. Once again, this is only Ishwara bringing me something positive and maybe also teaching that this excess is not necessary. Neither be dismayed by difficult relationships, neither be over-thrilled by positive ones, and come back, come back into an Ishwara contemplation. So what I'm saying is, what I'm going is a little deeper into those nine steps. And one of the steps, satsang is not satsang to find the satsang is not up to you it has to be the grace of ishwara that you find a satsang 
However, once the satsang has been found, it's up to you to show up or catch up with the satsang recordings later. However, the smarana or the constant remembrance is up to you. It is up to you. And, <clears throat> and that these are some methods. Cultivating a constant awareness, finding from a pair of shoes to a difficulty to, to an opportunity, everything can be taken back to the substratum of your existence, which is Ishwara.